Okay, this is annoying me. Where does this go? Okay, that works. Hey everybody, and today we are going to do, we're gonna make something, so yeah. So, you are here because I'm teaching you how to make a pair of ruby slippers. And if you don't want to learn how to make a pair, then you can just go. So, but yeah, anyways. And this is dog stop licking your paw. So this is going to be like a three part video or something where I'm going to, okay, there's hairs in the air, get away. This is going to be like a three part video thing, I think, maybe four, I don't know on how to make them, and today we're just going to start with video number one, and a little um, thing I should tell you, if you just want to make a pair for Halloween or something, or you just want to glue on sequins, then you better get out of here. So this is how to make like official kind of replica pair, well not really that official, because yeah, but the, we're, we're sewing here, sewing sequins, so if you don't want to sew, then you better scoot your butt out of here. Okay, let's get started. So this video is going to be basically about finding the shoes and getting other materials and kind of getting prepared. The next time we'll go into actually doing junk. So for the shoes, I found this pair that's over here somewhere. Love it, be kind of big. I found this pair because you want to start by looking like Salvation Armies everywhere and stuff and you want to look for shoes that actually look like the real ones. So a size, the real shoes are a size, I think Judy Garland had small feet so I think it's like a size 5 or 6 or 5 and a half or something. I don't know. Sorry, I just looked that part up. I should have looked this all up. Oh jeez. Well, whatever. You can look it up on your own time. The shoe company that provided the shoes for them is the Innis Shoe Company. So look for Innis Shoes. Here's what the label looks like. Yeah, so look for that and inside it might be stamped or it could be a little, um, like, um, you know, like a little cloth thing that they sewn in, you know, which you can buy. And I have one. Oh, maybe I can just show you. Uh, no, I don't want to show you yet because then you'll see the shoes on it. Okay, whatever. Um, so my pair, I couldn't find them at Salvation Army or anything. So I ended up my um, feeder group. They have all these crazy shoes and some old shoes too. And I found a pair from there that was pretty close. Of course, it's really hard to find a pair that's like spot on. But because in its shoes, if you find one, it's like maybe one on eBay or one on Etsy. And they're super expensive when you find them usually. So yeah, and some of them are all like open toed at the end. You don't want open toes. Also, you want to look for a pretty big heel. Um, here, uh, if you can see on the picture, there's kind of an arc. It's not like the heel just goes straight up and then there's an arc kind of between, you know, and the inside, and then it goes down. So you're gonna look for that. But if you find a shoe, then you can always make adjustments to the side. Or if you find a good top part, the heel's not right, you can find um, the Etsy Dreamer of Oz store, which is one just a wonderful person. I'll probably name him a couple of times. Uh, he's great if you have, um, if you need any help, you know, stuff like that. And also, I think he has a blog thing, Randy's Ruby Slippers. I think that's it. Um, you can email him for help, um, anything like that. So he provides with some great um, stuff that you can buy for making Ruby Slippers, especially like the bows and stuff. Those really hard to find gems. Once you find your pair. Uh, remember, it doesn't have to be spot on. It'll still be a great pair. Then you can go ahead and you can get your other stuff. So the other things you need are Randy's Ruby Slippers. I think he actually has a material list on his website. Oh, I think I know. I, I, <laughs> for in school, you sometimes we do like these nonfiction books. And in sixth grade, I did nonfiction book on the Wizard of Oz, like the costumes and props. Let me get my book because I think I have in it a list of the material on the Ruby Slippers. Here's my book. It's really pretty. It's on sale now at Barnes & Noble. No, it's not. If I got this thing published, and no, they just won't. But... Okay, let me just look through this. Ooh, table of contents. The introduction. Chapter number three, Ruby Slippers. Ooh, behind the camera. When the witch is shocked by the shoes, the shock is actually apple juice. Bet you didn't know that. Did ya? Shoes. In shoe company with locations in Hollywood, blah blah blah. So obviously you're gonna need sequins. You're not gonna buy them on a strand unless you wanna be cheap. Cause we're gonna sew these on. That's what I'm here to show you. How to sew these on. Now this is my first pair I'm sewing on. 
So I'm probably gonna suck and it's probably gonna look horrible, but I'm still gonna attempt to show you how to do it. The size of the sequins, 316 of an inch or something, I don't know, <laughs> millimeters, something like that, that's what it says. Dark red or burgundy, it's 2016 people. We aren't gonna use gelatin sequins because they'll just like break in our hands. We're gonna use normal, the plastic ones or whatever, but you can buy them from this wonderful site that I'll leave in the description if I remember. It's called Cart or Cart Writes Sequins, and they have these sequins that you can buy. <laughs> Sorry, man, my butt's awesome. They have this dark red metallic kind. I think the link will take you right to it. You're gonna want to buy. I bought like five packets of these. Let me get them. Here's my ruby slipper box. Here's how it came. This little package. So I got I got five of these packets, but you might want six just for extra. I think there is how many in a packet? Approximately 1,200. Now let me just make a little suggestion. There's a couple different ways that people make the ruby slippers so they can get the sequins on because you don't want to sew right into the leather shoes because that would take a million years. One way is they sew onto silk stretched over a hoop. I need to get some bigger silk. Mm -hmm. Sew onto the silk, the sequins, and the pattern form and then you lay it over and you like glue it on the shoes. That's the way we're doing just because that's easier. One way I started to do was by the company Scrum Studios, and they give you a pattern so you can make out of buckram a shell of the shoe, and then you paint it, and then you sew in it. Now let me tell you, this thing is hard as a rock, and I only got about, see those dots? That was me sewing through that far. I had to use like a leather needle on this, and those still bent from this. And I had to like yank it in, it was horrible on me. So I would not suggest using this method, but if you want to, go ahead, purchase the $15 for the thing, but you're gonna deal with. And there's some other methods too. Uh, that's just the one we're gonna do, this overlay, so we can just try that out, and probably it'll go a lot quicker than that noise, whatever that was. To paint the shoes, the shoes are going to be need to be a dark color of red, so we're gonna need some paint. You're gonna wanna go with the dark color. This is Santa Red by Americana. See? Ooh. Some of the pairs that are found today, they have um, like an orange belt on the bottom to soften them from like clicking and clacking. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I don't know. My pair is going to try to be the Roberta Bauman pair. You can look that up. I have to still get the specific on that. They kind of put it right on the shoe. The felt is like an orange felt. They put it around here. The shoes are lined in white kid leather. So my shoes, since they didn't have white kid leather on the inside, I well, I took masking tape and I made a pattern on the inside because this is the original inside of the shoe right here and then I made this white kid leather thing so you might want to buy some white tape leather I got it in a roll and since I got all these Joann's coupons I just did most of the stuff purchased here is purchased from Joann's okay and don't think you're gonna really find sequins at like Joann's or anything you're gonna find them on the roll you're not gonna be able to find good sequins Gwyn's, like, yeah, okay. The leather insole. So I was telling you about it earlier. Here, let me just take out the, the insole, insole of the shoe. This is a pattern that I made from the white kid leather. So this is what I was talking about, the Innis Shoe Company thing. See, so you can buy these from Dreamer Boss. I think I'll leave his link down below with Randy's ruby slippers. And you just sew them on and boom, you're done. You're done. By the way, if you get a cobbler to do your shoes, it's really expensive, so I would not recommend it. Unless you want to pay like hundreds of dollars to get your shoes made. The bows. You're going to want like a checkbook leather, you know that thin? Kind of like this. Leather for the bows to hold all the jewels on top of. You're not sewing into the leather though for the bows. We're going to do the silk overlay. Here, I started a bow, but I'm probably going to redo it because this one looks funny. And then just go right, and we'll cut this out, and then we'll put the bow over it, and yeah, I'll explain that later. A reddish-orange um, thread. All the rhinestones. Here's what it looks like. Here's the box from Randy's Ruby Slippers. Super awesome. You open it up, I have one sewn, but you got those little tiny rhinestones, you need those ones. You're going to want to buy bugle beads. These little real type rhinestone things. So you're gonna want some hoops, some quilting hoops so you can stretch over the stuff for when you're making bows or when you're making the actual shoe thing made out of sequins. 
So that's basically it. That's basically the ruby slipper, the shoes, components, and everything you kind of need to go out and buy. So if you want to buy some, you want to make some shoes, go out, get that stuff, and come back. Oh, you're gonna want some masking tape for this project, and you're gonna want some um, Fabri Tac glue. It's very, very helpful. So don't forget, gonna want a needle, nice and pointy. Um, that's basically everything you need. I'll join you for another video where we'll start making the slippers, even though I've kind of already started. And yeah, so. Oh, by the way, the um, little bit of the slippers you saw in the beginning of the video, those are just some old pair that I made, just gluing some out of tap shoes. So, don't trust in those. That's probably not what the finished product should look like. But, let's hope our finished product will look amazing. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, please comment and oh shoot I'm not gonna say it I told myself at the beginning of YouTube I wasn't gonna ask you guys to like or subscribe so I'm gonna not say that and um just do what you want like if you want subscribe if you want and I love you guys so much thank you for watching and because ruby slippers